Hello. Today we are going to discuss about how we can go about implementing a value stream mapping on a current project. There are five steps which are involved in value stream mapping. Step one is to create the value stream as is. That is the current situation of how that particular activity is happening. Step two is to identify wastes and bottlenecks. Step three is to create the future state to be value stream map how you would want or what future state you can achieve prepare an action plan to achieve the future state value stream map and finally step 5 is to continuously repeat steps 1 to 4 in order to achieve continual improvement now how do we start the value stream mapping on the project the first and foremost important point is to define scope of value stream mapping like an example we want to do a value stream mapping for completion of one piling cycle. So we have to focus only on the activities which are involved from start to end of one piling cycle. Or another example could be casting of a precast girder at site. Once the scope is defined, the next important point is to clarify the objective of value stream mapping. Why we are doing the value stream mapping for that particular activity. For an example, it could be to improve the time cycle by 15% or it could be to reduce the wastage by 10%. So when we do the value stream mapping, we need to focus on the objective on which we are working. The next important point to understand is the people who are involved in the exercise of value stream mapping. All stakeholders should be involved in the discussion for value stream mapping. The people who use the process, the ground workers like site engineers, the supervisors, operators, subcontractors, representatives. These are the people who are working on the ground and are the most important people in the activity. People who support the process like quality and safety engineers or equipment engineers, they should be involved. People who have input to the process like the project manager, the planning manager, construction manager, the designers, supply chain, etc. And finally, the recipient of the process like the client and consultant. So all these people should be involved in the value stream mapping exercise. Stay focused on the norm. One should always remember the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the outcomes are from 20% of the causes. So the idea is we should focus on the 20% causes which are going to have the maximum impact on the outcome and don't focus on exceptions to solve the problems. There may be many other small small points which could be contributing towards the entire activity but the maximum focus should be on those 80 on those 20 percent which are giving you the 80 percent outcome and finally the most important thing is there should be an environment conducive for open discussion every stakeholder should get a fair chance to express what he feels about the process what are his areas of concerns and what inputs he wants to give and there should be a moderator who will see to it that no one person dictates the flow of discussion in the entire exercise. Having said that, now let us look at the step one, which is to create as is process map. We need to go and collect the information by actually walking at the site. Start with a quick walk through the entire value stream to get a sense of flow and sequence of activities. Begin from the last activity and go to the first. Record your own timings with your own stopwatch. Do not rely on standard times or information given by others. Map the whole value stream yourself and you can draw the value stream by hand. The idea is the goal is not how good you are drawing the map but to understand the flow of information and material. So this is how you can create a value stream mapping at site. You have all the information, you put all the activities and the relevant data. Once that is done, step two is to identify wastes and bottlenecks. Once we have mapped the entire activities, then we can find out which are the areas where there are possibilities of wastes and where are the bottlenecks. So we need to identify and eliminate the non-value added activities. Tackle the low hanging fruits first. It means the 20% areas which are giving you 80% of the problems is the areas which we have to hand, 
handle first because once we are able to take care of those you will have you can immediately see a large impact happening on the activity and improve the information and flow by using full principle like kanban step 3 is to create the future state to be value stream map based on the information obtained in step 2 identify possible reduction in resources and time in each activity an example is given we are identifying various wastes and bottlenecks and what are the possible corrective action that you can take in order to mitigate those issues based on this information then you draw a future state map value stream map it means what can you achieve by taking care of all these problems prepare an action plan to achieve the future state value stream map that is the step number 4 so break down the implementation of future step into small steps identify measurable goals for these steps assign responsibilities to appropriate person with defined timelines that these activities need to be completed in so and so timeline so that we will be able to achieve the future state value stream map so that is your step number 4 so this is how the entire exercise of value stream mapping has to happen from step number 1 to step number 4 having done that then the next step which comes is the step 5 which is continual improvement so you had a current state when you started with and you designed a future state for that activity then you work on that activity and you achieved that future state now this future state becomes your current state and then you further act on it in order to achieve the next future state just to quote an example here you can see this is how the time cycle for a piling activity was improved so as a baseline if you look under the column of all you see that on an average 367 hours were required for completing one piling activity after the value stream mapping was done after the first workshop we were able to bring that 367 down to 164 so that is the first target that we have achieved so the current state was 367 the future state was 164 once 164 was achieved another workshop was conducted another target was taken as 172 and we were able to then achieve 150 hours of time so this is how you have to continuously improve on your activity and try to get the required improvements using value stream method thank you